What's up everybody? Our channel has an awesome viewer by the name of Marlene from Canada and every day she posts positive news stories to our Facebook page. So today's episode is dedicated to you Marlene. Thank you for bringing all of these stories to my attention. So are you overwhelmed by the never-ending supply of depressing bad news? Well let's refuel our tanks with seven recent positive stories. This is Getty News for the month of January 2020. North Sydney woman creates community tree filled with warm clothing is the Getty News headline, courtesy of Erin Potty with the Cape Breton Post, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Nicole McPherson set up a Christmas tree in her yard that has delivered more than the festive spirit. In place of tinsel and garland are plastic bags stuffed with warm clothing, including jackets, sweaters, hats, and mittens. A continuing care assistant by profession, McPherson said that everyone goes through a period of time where they are down on their luck. Many of the items for the tree are gently used, but some are brand new. Most of the clothing has come by way of donation. And McPherson said the idea for the community tree came from a social media post in the United States where someone filled a coat rack with donated jackets. McPherson said, I just thought it was a wonderful idea and anything to help our community is worth doing. Yellowknife Man Reunited with Tricycle Stolen One Year Ago is the Getty News headline courtesy of Avery Zingle of CBC News and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A year ago, some kids made off with a three-wheel trike belonging to Seppo Varela, a 70-year-old survivor of multiple strokes. His daughter, Arlene, said the trike meant freedom for her dad, who lost his driver's license after the series of health setbacks. The tricycle belonged to Seppo's late father, who used to ride it around a community home for seniors. For months, Seppo's family and friends looked high and low for the bike. Then Seppo's son-in-law, Ben Brown, got a call from a friend who found the trike in the water at the bottom of a cliff lake. The trike's fenders were dented, the gears needed an overhaul, and it was now rusty, but Ben plans to repair the trike and motorize it with an in-hub motor. Seppo said he is happy for two reasons. He has his trike back, and also his son-in-law has a great project to work on. How people with Down syndrome are improving Google's voice recognition tech is the Giddy News headline, courtesy of Connor Garrell with the Huffington Post, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. It's all OK Google and Hey Siri in the world of smartphone and voice assistant tech where by next year it's expected that 50% of all internet searches will be undertaken by voice command. But the technology wasn't made to understand people with Down syndrome, for whom an estimated 30% of all the words spoken are missed. However, almost two years ago, Google partnered with the Canadian Down Syndrome Society to create a new project called Project Understood, which is an effort to teach the company's systems to better understand people with different speech patterns. For people with Down syndrome, this sort of technology has the potential of producing a deeper, more meaningful effect. It can help people feel understood, Julie Cattell, a project manager with Google AI, told CBC News. The more examples the algorithm receives, the better it will get. Hundreds of choir singers stage U.S.-Mexico border sing-along on both sides of the barrier. Is the Getty News headline, courtesy of Chantal Da Silva of Newsweek, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Hundreds of choir singers join Canadian music group Choir, Choir, Choir in a sing-along across both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border in a bid to bring people on both sides of the barrier together. Their performance of With a Little Help from My Friends by the Beatles was live-streamed on Facebook. The initiative was led by the two founders of the Toronto-based choir group, with David Goldman leading the sing-along on the U.S. side, while Nobu Adilman conducted the singing on the Mexican side of the border in Tijuana. According to the Facebook event page, singers of all levels united on both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border to celebrate the unique friendship, culture, and community shared in the border region of San Diego and Tijuana. Pender Harbor teens discover 90-year-old stranded in car for three days is the Getty News headline courtesy of the Vancouver Carrier and a link to the source will be included in the description below. A 90-year-old man stranded on a logging road for three days was rescued after being discovered by two teenagers who were dirt biking in the area. It was a pretty precarious situation because I was on the edge of quite a big ditch, said Jones, who moved to the passenger seat to keep it balanced. 
Jones estimated he was eight kilometers up the road and decided to stay with the car rather than test his fate on the steep and rugged terrain. Nolan Johnston and Jacob Thornton, meanwhile, were dirt biking near Madera Park when they decided to try a trail down a different road. When they knocked on the window, Jones gave them a thumbs up, leading them to think somebody was already coming for him. As they walked to their bikes, they heard the man knock on the window, so they returned and opened the door. Jones said after his rescue, was I ever pleased to get out of there? I was so thirsty. Regina's superheroes hockey team gives kids with disabilities a chance to play, is the Giddy News headline, courtesy of Joelle Sill with CBC News, and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Mark Taylor never thought he'd see his 11-year-old son, Jack, putting on a hockey jersey and stepping out onto the ice as part of a team. Jack, who has autism, is a player on the superheroes team in Regina. The program provides kids with cognitive and physical challenges an opportunity to lace up some skates and hit the ice. The superheroes pilot project launched in Calgary and now has expanded to more cities across Western Canada. It was adapted from the Hockey Education Reaching Society, also known as HEROES. This program epitomizes the phrase, hockey is for everyone, said Rob Kerr, one of the HEROES team members who helped start the program in Calgary. Mark said, I went out on the ice with them the first day and I looked up in the stands at all the parents. They either had big wide grins on their face or they kind of looked a little misty-eyed. Eleven veterans set to move into Calgary Homes for Heroes Tiny Home Village is the Giddy News headline courtesy of Heidi Pearson with MSN News and a link to the source will be included in the description below. Canada's first Homes for Heroes village provides affordable transitional housing for homeless veterans. The community has 15 tiny homes along with a resource center, family suite, counselor suite, and community gardens. According to the Homes for Heroes Foundation, the tiny home option means more privacy, security, and peer-to-peer -peer support for veterans who live there compared to traditional homeless housing services. Residents will have access to mentoring, case management, counseling, and links to other services and programs they may need or want. Heroes Foundation President and co-founder Dave Howard said, Canadians truly appreciate our veterans and we thank them. All right, that's it. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you have a positive news story that you'd like for me to share, please include a link in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.